That is my gift for interviews. It's pointing out obscure things and asking people about them, even though. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. What up, Fightful fam? Shaquille Majui here. And you know who this is. She is a badass ranked women's flyweight and an even more badass mom. Andrea K. Givili, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are y'all? Or how I'm, are you? How's I'm everyone? doing I'm doing great. I hope everyone is doing great, you know. Um I've been slurping down my iced coffee, so like the heartbeat is starting to go up, so I'm like hyper and active ready ready for this interview. Oh, that's good. Coffee no. always good good way to start the day, start the yeah. start an interview. Uh, I know. Well, you know, mixed bag. I, I find like a beer can be kind of nice sometimes. You know, it like mellows you out a little bit, but to each their yeah. own. Uh, and speaking of alcoholic beverages, I saw on your Instagram that you had this like dope tricked out wine bottle, like a portable wine bottle. And you mentioned that you might want to get one for your daughter. And then I just I was looking at the bottle and I was thinking about that statement. And I'm like, what is the difference between a portable wine bottle and just like any water bottle? <laughs> Well, um, I don't even know if I brought it in. Where is it? Oh, yeah, I did. It's just, well, a portable one, you know, it's like, um, it's, um, like stainless steel, really. So, I mean, it keeps your, it, it's metal, you know what I mean? Like, it's stainless steel, like, it keeps everything, like, cold, so. Lovely. Mm. And it's discreet. I mean, you know, like, the packaging isn't particularly discreet, but no one knows there's wine in there, so you can take it with no, you you like. No, no this it's all water <laughs> ah, all right fair enough bottle because of the way it's shaped gotcha well, i was just curious because um actually uh, i'm in vancouver canada and we just started allowing people to drink in they passed the law so people could drink in public parks it's like certain areas only but it was like a bit of a covid measure to like get yeah. people to stop partying in their homes as they would like give them spaces outdoors to drink so you know I guess I didn't think about that whenever I posted. Like, oh, I'm gonna get angry. <laughs> I just, it's, it's the water bottle, but it's like, I guess they call it like a wine bottle because it's it's shaped like a wine bottle. But well, yeah, that no is wine. my that is my gift for interviews. It's pointing out obscure things and asking people about them, even though. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. You, ca you caught that. Now, uh, speaking of obscure things, uh, you're taking on Roxanne Modafferi at UFC Vegas. 10 if i'm doing the math correctly on saturday september 12th and mm -hmm. uh roxanne has a vicious trash talking game she does the best pre fight videos have you seen the trash talking bit she did for your upcoming no. fight oh i have to send it to you it's 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 terrific uh she basically it's like a really high quality video she got a whole team together for it and she's on a show and a guy is trying to get her to trash talk you it's like, you know, really? call, call her, call, call her a mother effer, call her this, call her that. And Roxy, just so sweet, so nice, just can't do it. It's yeah. actually really good. So I'll send it your way. Well, I wanna, how am I supposed to be able to watch it? I want to see what. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, you know, hindsight 2020, we could have done like a live reaction thing. But you know what? Maybe we still can after this. If, if time permits, maybe I'll uh, send you the video and we can record you watching it. Oh, okay. We'll see what yeah. we got to. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the fight with Roxy. Um, obviously, you know, she, since coming back to the UFC, has alternated wins and losses in all of her fights um, coming off of a loss. You yourself, unfortunately, are on the first losing streak of your career, two straight fights, but both split decisions, super competitive, um, you know, definitely not a wash. Who do you, th I asked Roxy this, and I'd love to ask you, who do you think has more pressure going into this fight, you or Roxy? Um... I don't, I don't really know. Uh, so she, she just lost her last fight, or mm -hmm. did she lose the last two? No, just the last one. Uh, the last one, yeah. So, I guess me because I've had two losses. So I guess more, more pressure is on me. <laughs> so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go in there and end up losing another decision. So I'm, I'm all in for this fight. I, I saw the interview you did with Cage Side press and what i really appreciated about it is like I, i've talked to roxy a bunch of times when i was over at buddy elbow she was a uh, fan favorite there and you know it's no secret that fans like to underestimate her they for whatever mm -hmm. reason don't seem to think she possesses the skills that she does and i, I really appreciated the props you gave her when you were uh, doing that interview what is it about roxy do you think that constantly has fans underestimating her and putting her as the underdog I just, I just think it's her persona. It's just her mm -hmm. character. It's just 
how she, you know, she represents herself and everybody just underestimates that, you know, because she is so sweet. And, you know, she's got that little, you know, nerdy look to her. I, not like in a bad way, but I mean, like, like she's, you just looking at Roxy, looking at me, people are like, yeah, you don't look like a fighter. But if you look at Roxy, you really wouldn't think she was a fighter. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, and she just carries, she carries herself so well and she's always so sweet. And I just, I just think that people just underestimate her based on, I think, the way that she, she, she is, just her mm -hmm. character, you know. Um, but I fought her, you know, so I know, you know, not to underestimate her. I never under, underestimate anyone, but she's always, you know, gonna. I feel like she's, she's always a big underdog, and she always comes in upsetting somebody. So I, I'm prepared, you know. I'm prepared this time. I wasn't as much prepared, I guess, as I, you know, I should have been mm -hmm. last time. So I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going in there to get upset. You know, I'm, I'm going in there to take the win and I know what to expect. I know she's a threat and you know, she's a threat everywhere. Yeah. If, um, like John Jones and Daniel Cormier is on this side of a, a bad blood, I feel like you and Roxy are like all the way over here. Yeah. I appreciate no. the camaraderie. Yeah, we don't have no bad blood. You know, no. it's just business. I, I feel like, you know, we're, be, we're friends before, we'll be friends after. You know, it's just, you know, we got to get in there and do our thing. For sure. And she had quite complimentary things to say about you as well. Uh, this is, if I'm not mistaken, your first time fighting in the Apex in this world on lockdown. Um, I asked Roxy, she, she did fight once under these new protocols and she was kind of breaking <laughs> down. What was familiar? What was different for you? What do you expect when you get in there? Do you, is it, do you think it's going to have any influence at all on the way you fight or the environment? How are you kind of anticipating that going? Man, I don't know. I hope it doesn't have. I hope it has a positive influence, you mm -hmm. know, on how I fight. No negative. Um, it's going to be. It's going to be so quiet. You know, you're going to be able to hear a pin drop probably. You know, you're. you're I know I'm going to be able to hear the commentators. I'm going to be able to hear her corner she's going to be able to hear my corner. So, I mean, it's, I don't know how that's, that's going to, you know, play in, into, you know, affecting the fight. Hopefully, you know, it'll just, um, make for a good fight. I feel like it has been a lot of the fights have been incredible. They've you know, been super exciting. So, you know, maybe it'll help. Fingers crossed. Uh, what is it about like, you know, I, I've heard, I've heard this a lot that, Oh, now I can hear my opponent's corner. They can hear my corner, et cetera. Why is it that when you are in front of a large audience that you can still pick out your corner's voices in a sea of, like, other sounds? Because you're, you know, you've been, you have a connection with your, with your coaches. Mm -hmm. And you've been training with them and they've been yelling at you, you know, like, throughout <laughs> You know, for however long you've been with them, you know, for me now, it's been a couple of years now. I've been, you know, and I'm, I'm like honed in to their voices yeah. and, um, you know, it's just, I, it's, it's all in training, you know, even when we're in the gym and we're sparring, you know, I mean, there's other noises and stuff going on. It's mm -hmm. not like super loud or anything like that. I mean, we do have music up or whatever, but it's like you, fo you, you have to teach, train yourself to focus in on, on their voices. And I feel like it's just, it's just, you know putting all the time in and just having that connection you know if you don't have a connection with somebody it's going to be a lot harder mm -hmm. you know you're not going to be able to like hone in on a voice that you're not familiar with like if someone were to like fill in last second who you haven't worked yeah. with much but gotcha oh, yeah uh you mentioned in that cage side press interview that uh you know you were a little worried about the gym possibly reclosing in the middle of the pandemic like where are we at right now is everything still running smoothly in terms of your yes that's good. Yes, everything's still running smoothly. Um, like, like I said, I just went to California for three weeks. You know, I got to train up there at MMA Gold. Um, Aspen wasn't able to train because she's got, she's um, healing up after her knee surgery. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, surprisingly, I was still able to train in California and then come back home. You know, here in Louisiana, all our gyms are still open and we don't have any any issues. So we're still getting to to get everything that we need. All right, and as we start wrapping up here, I you know, we've done a couple interviews now. I don't think I've ever actually asked like what led to you pursuing combat sports as a career. Well, I think I've always been interested in contact sports as a kid. You know, coming up, you know, and seeing like martial arts movies, and you know that always kind of um, 
inspired me to want to to be a martial artist. I always wanted to take karate, um, but never got the opportunity to. So when I graduated from high school, you know, you know, became an adult, making my own money, I could, you know, like afford to pay a gym membership. But I wanted to do like boxing and kickboxing. I didn't want to do just like traditional karate. So um, that was kind of around the time that MMA got pretty big. It was well known. And, you know, it was just something that I thought looked like fun. I'm like, ooh, I want to be a cage fighter. That that sounds <laughs> that sounds like fun. I want to, you know, <laughs> kick somebody in the head. Uh, but I just, and I just did. I, you know, and also I think because I wanted to like do something different besides lifting weights every day and yeah. just running like a new type of, something to keep me interested and to keep me uh, in shape and Agreed. you know and I love contact sports I love being physical I love being an athlete and I wanted to continue to be able to pursue something even if it was just a hobby I didn't know it was going to actually become a career uh, I just thought it would be something for fun but you know ended up being a, a career choice so, so do you do you like remember a specific moment where like I'm going to go all in on this as a career or is it just one of those things where you took an amateur fight for fun and the next thing you know you're turning pro I do remember it was actually so I started boxing and I went to women's I went to the state golden gloves I won state golden mm-hmm. gloves and then I went to women's national golden gloves in a in a like a, a span of seven months you know and I went to the women's national golden gloves in, in Hollywood Florida and I ended up beating some pretty good girls there but then I ended up losing uh, in the championship uh, finale so that just kind of even though i lost it made me think well i accomplished so much in seven months i wonder where i'll be like five years from now i'm like i see what i can do this is like fun i love it and even though i i you know tasted my my first loss it um it's still like it kind of lit a fire inside me and i just wanted to see you know where i could take it and um honestly at that point like thinking about the olympics was kind of like something but Mm. you know that that actually mma was my my primary focus but my coach and everyone at that time was like let's try to shoot for the olympics you know in the next four years i'm like (laughs) okay but no that (laughs) that feels a little out you know then like the ufc actually became like a an opportunity because ronda rousey like you know kicked the gates open and you know women were in the ufc so that was kind of um a, a much higher percent you know percentage than going to the olympics getting well, into the i mean you know you're a top 10 ufc fighter so i feel like you made the right call i did and um, i'm happy about it you know i remember thinking i'm not gonna have any what ifs in life i'm not gonna have any regrets i'm gonna take i'm gonna like ride this you know i'm gonna ride this out and see where it takes me and you know what do you know i'm, I'm here <laughs> it's still going and who, and who knows yeah. where, you know you know who knows where the ceiling is right yeah yeah well andrea man, that is all i have for you today uh i want to thank you so much for your time it's a pleasure as always you fight roxanne modafferi at ufc vegas 10 on saturday september 12th best of luck and i'll catch you on the flip side thank you very much appreciate it <laughs>